from Poland. We are in Tichy. Cinquecento is 25, so we thought we'd celebrate it by bringing it back to the factory where it was made. And uh, it's just clicked over 40,000 miles. So we're going to do a little bit of fun things today. Fiat put a lot of time and energy into the development of the Cinquecento. It actually started in the 80s developing it. But they didn't really have an awful lot of money, so it's a very slow development process. And they didn't have a test track to actually test the cars on. So what I'm going to do today is actually follow the route of the original engineer's prototype cars. Because they actually took a route through some of the most beautiful scenery in this local area. I know it doesn't really look like it here, but there is some beautiful scenery nearby. Um, where they would test out the handling, the suspension, and the ride of the cars long before they would go into production. So it's a really nice way to celebrate 25 years of the... Uh, Cinquecento, and uh, we're hopefully you're going to enjoy the uh, scenery. By the way, I do love the fact that all these tiny little fates are made in a factory in a place called Tichy. It just really works for me. This is probably the first time the Cinquecento has been outside the UK since it was made here 25 years ago. So it's a kind of a nice little way to celebrate its 25th birthday. Unfortunately, with a lot of car companies, they really don't care about a car they made 25 years ago. It's something that's very important to me and maybe some people here in these old cars, but here it's not such a big deal. But it's nice to actually celebrate its 25th birthday and bring it back here, let it see the factory where it was made. Literally the last thing you thought you would see at a Fiat factory in Poland would be a stonky old rover. One of the things that's a little bit sad about the situation with Fiat in Poland is that they put so many resources into the country in the 60s and the 70s and then in the 80s and the 90s they bought out the old communist factories like these ones and made them into very modern uh, places to work and produced very high level cars but the thing is there's very few of those about now. Most of the local Poles all drive German cars, um, Mercedes and BMW being the most popular. Although there's none in the shop behind me right at the moment. There's actually two Fiat's. These are quite interesting, the black number plates. That means that car is still registered to the same family since it was new because obviously they've swapped over to the white sort of European style number plate since then. But anyway, besides the point. Yeah, it's quite sad to say that there's so few things like this still totally around Poland and the Germans have invaded for yet the third time. Interesting little tidbit, we're heading away from Tichy down to Belsico Bayata. I was here uh, not terribly long ago, about five years ago. Um, I was picking up a car for the Lane Museum and for various different reasons I had to bring it to Poland and I thought you know what I've always wanted to go and see where they made the Fiat 126 because there was a Fiat 126 factory down here and I came down and um, there was a little section um, in the booking.com which said this hotel had a car park and I got to the car park with the Volkswagen XL1, which from this point forward we will describe as the electric supercar, even though it's neither. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it looks like an electric supercar. And uh, turned up at the hotel and they were like, you know, uh, yes, there's your room, lovely, check in. And I went, oh, where's your car park? And they go, well, we actually use the main square um, in front of the town hall. And I was like, right, okay. 150,000 euro electric supercar. Town Square, small town. Okay, parked it there all night, you know, had a few drinks, sort of thought to myself, going, well, if it's not there in the morning, it's insured, we can always get another one, you know, because they made 200 of them, so I'm sure it'd be really easy to get another one. And we uh, got up the next morning and went round, and the police were there beside said electric supercar, and they uh, were standing right beside it, and I'm going, no, no, something's happened to it. And um, I walked up and they go, is this your vehicle? And I went, uh, yes. And they went, it's okay, we stay with it all night. Can we get selfies? Um, and I let two Polish policemen sit in it and take lots of pictures of themselves sitting on it. So we got into that and then we're coming the other way. So we're going back this way. We're heading sort of like north um, away from... Um, the borders with, uh, I think it's Hungary's to the south of here. And I'm in traffic and I'm on this road 
and I know you can't really see, but it's a dual carriageway um, with a central reservation in the middle. But occasionally there's just green patches in the middle, there's no barrier. And there is a guy in a Renault Megane just slightly in front of me, and there is a guy in a Nissan Qashqai just slightly behind me. And the guy in the Qashqai is taking lots and lots of photographs of the XL1 and not really paying attention to what was in front of him. And just over there, um, a car had broken down in what we'd call the overtaking lane. And they, he didn't see it. And he's too busy taking pictures. And I'm starting to like, ah! and he thinks I'm waving at him. And he's going, yay! And I'm going, no! And the next thing we know, uh, the Renault in front of him, Sansa breaks on, and the Qashqai plows into the back of the Megane. And you know the way most modern cars are mainly plastic, so the, these two things just explode in this shower of little bits of plastic. Um, broken tail lights and bumpers and headlights and that sort of thing. And they're pinging off the side of the electric supercar, which is going to a museum. And let's just say the McDonald's back up there, um, I had to give it about three coffees in, um, in quick succession. Um, and weirdly, to this day, if you ever go to the museum and they ha in the Lane Museum in Nashville, and they have the uh, one of the doors up on the XL1, look in on the sill. You'll see this tiny little indentation uh, in the plastic sill. It's got these sills are about this wide, and uh, there's a little tiny indentation, on it. and that was um, a little piece of plastic from uh, one of the cars which came in through the window and got stuck in my fleece. And when I would go to get out. I, it fell out of my place and I slammed the door and there was this horrible crunching noise and it was basically the door crushing some part of a Nissan Qashqai into the extremely expensive bits of plastic trim of the XL1 and uh, that's how that got there. So we've just left the town of Bills, Bill, we've just left there uh, where the FCA engine factory is which used to be a plant that made the Fiat 126 and they didn't have a test track for their various different prototypes for the Cinquecento, so they actually had to bring it up into the mountains. And you can see here, this is going to be a fairly twisty route, so we've actually managed to track down the original test route for the Cinquecento uh, prototypes. So we're going to do this. It takes about an hour and a half, and it should be quite scenic, so really quite looking forward to this. We are about 30 kilometers from Tichy, which is now the big main manufacturing site for FIT in Poland and it's where all the second generation pandas were made and there is a huge number of them in this area like you're driving along and it's like oh panda oh panda oh another panda and it's sort of like there was a Bette Midler movie once made called Killing, Mer Killing Mona um, where the entire town all drove Yugos and it's a little bit like that where you just see all these pandas absolutely everywhere. This is quite the climb. I can see why they used this as the, the original test route for the Cinquecento. Um, twisty, turny, fire engines, no idea what all that's about. <clears throat> as long as we're not on fire, that's the main thing. Whee! Going downhill now, so I'm really hoping the fit engineers definitely check the brakes on this section of road. Okay, the Neva just does not want to overtake. Obviously, it's just in awe at the mighty Cinquecento in front of it. And Fiat actually had put a lot of development into these cars. Um, it was a very convoluted system of building cars in Poland under communism. Um, Fiat did a deal in the very early 70s for the 126 to be made here. And then in the late 70s, they actually stopped making it in Italy. And all of the 126s were then transferred to Poland for manufacture. And um, they, they were spread out a couple of, across a couple of different companies, I believe. It's very complicated and a lot of it is in Polish, so it's very hard to follow. But FSM which mainly made the small cars. Uh, they seem to be the main manufacturer of the 126, uh, which I believe is uh, was a Titchy. Um, but then you had this plant down here, 
and it was also making 126s. There used to be a 126 hotel in the town, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, the rooms were like all decked out with like you know uh, shots from the factory and um, like little 126 furniture. Um, they had a coffee table made out of uh, a gearbox with a glass top on it. So when Fiat decided to replace the 126 with the Cinquecento, which didn't, like a lot of Fiat things, didn't actually happen, and the cars actually continued on um, in con currently, and to the point where the 126 actually outlived the Cinquecento. So the last of the Cinquecentos were made in 1998, which is what this car is. Um, these last cars, oh, I've just seen a Polonaise hearse. They use them for everything. Anyway, um, the um, the last cars had a lot of Seicento bits in them. Um, I have a Seicento steering wheel, which I know I've mentioned in various other videos. It does make you think, you know, 30, 35 years ago when, you know, those engineers from Titchi Fiat were taking these prototypes out on these roads and tearing up and down the mountains in between the trees. They'd ever imagine that some idiot from Ireland would like buy one of these cars for 500 pounds and take it back to the factory it was made in and then take it on the test strip that the prototypes were all tested on. I have to say it's, it's, it's performed remarkably well and I don't think these roads have had much done to them in the last 35 years. Yep, we're definitely testing out the suspension. Currently sitting at some very exciting Polish roadworks. Oh look, it's a Doblo. This is probably more of a test route uh, now uh, than it was in the late 1980s. There's um, nothing like driving over a communist era dam to inspire you with confidence, I'd have to say. Fiat also made a 700cc version of the Cinquecento, which was the uh, water-cooled engine from the Fiat 126 uh, called the BIS. And obviously they would have put it through the same tests as what they did with this. And I think it had, what, 27, 28 horsepower? I have to say that would be something to see going up and down these hills. Um, I know these things never show up properly in camera. But uh, yeah, this is this is quite the journey. Well, that was Bilsko Biala to Zalwig um, on the old uh, Fiat test route for the Cinquecentos. I have to say, it did okay for a 500 pound car. Um, was overtaken a few times by little old men and like, you know, one litre courses. But, you know, these things sort of happen from time to time. So as you can see, we're in very beautiful Zylwig. And uh, we're going to head back to Bilsko Biala now, back to the hotel. I'd like to show you a little bit of Bilsko Biala. See, I can pronounce it now, I think, hopefully. I'm going to get lots of Polish people in the comments going, No, you don't say it like that. It's it's called Wartburg or something. There's me. There's a Fiat. There's a derelict building behind me. Um, come to Poland. It's really beautiful. idea how people did that every day, um, testing cars. Um, I'm absolutely knackered after doing it, I need to go and have a lie down like an old person.
that's us checked in for the night uh, at the uh, Belskid Hotel, which ironically is also the name for the Polish in-house version of one of these. So between about 1981, 82 and about 1986, the Poles had their own idea of how to replace the Fiat 126 with a little car which surprisingly looks very much like the Twingo from Renault. Um, and they named it after the mountain range down here, the Belskid Mountains, which is obviously why you've got this in the background, because we're in those mountain ranges. Um, they continued the development of it because they thought that um, the deal with fate on these may not may not go through. Um, but when it did, then, as I say, the car was basically put into, into mothballs. All the copies were supposed to be destroyed. Unfortunately, only one of them was destroyed. Uh, the other six went to museums. Um, but um, if you're in Warsaw and you're in Krakow or you're in um, a couple of the other like technical museums, you can go and actually look at the alternative to uh, what the Fiat Cinquecento would have been if the Poles had had more of an input. Anyway, you got to come inside with me. you got to see this place. The um, It really is something else inside. It really is. Um, it's 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 pure 80s communism. Definitely worth staying. Well, that's our time in Poland over. Um, if we go any further south, we'll be in Slovakia. If we go any further east, we'll be in a war zone. So, time to basically call it a day. It's been a lot of fun. Just has had a pro has had a problems. There's been a few little odds and ends, but it is a 25 year old car that has not done an awful lot of miles over the years. We're turning around and we're going to be heading back to the UK. So we've got a little Fitz cars and coffee on Sunday to get to. This is Tuesday night, so see how we get on. Um, should make it hopefully. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my wander around Poland and celebration of all things Cinquecento and small Fiat. Um, like, subscribe, tune in, do what you gotta do. Anyway, hopefully catch you again soon. Bye!